to say. Thank you, Psalmist, for talking about our life. He said, and some are dealing with famine. He said, I'm watching you. My eyes are on you so I can deliver your soul from death and also deliver you in the time of famine. Famine is not just a dry place. It's not just food. Some of us are dealing with weariness. We're tired of coming up short. We're tired of things not producing like we want it to. We're tired of things like moving like they're supposed to. We're tired of looking and not seeing an increase. We feel like famine. But God said that I came to tell you that my eye is on you. Because as I'm watching you, I'm working. And let me tell you what the ancient Hebrew says. This had me shouting in my living room early this morning. Some people are dealing with a family famine. Some people are dealing with money famine. Some people are dealing with relationship famine. Some people are dealing with dream famine. Some people are dealing with faith famine. Some people are dealing with church famine. Some people are dealing with plans famine. Some people are dealing with job famine. Some people are dealing with health famine. But he told me to tell you that this place of dryness is only temporary because what it says is that I am thankful that God is watching and working on my soul issues and the famines in my life because what the Hebrew says is that God will snatch you out without permission. The Hebrew says, when he said, I will deliver you from famine, it means literally to snatch you out without asking for permission. He will snatch you out. I, he didn't have to bring me out. He had to snatch me out of that place so that I would know the deliverance. He said, I snatched you out to revive you. The Hebrew says that I will snatch you out without permission. Don't you just love somebody that don't have to ask nobody's permission to do what they want to do? That's God. He didn't have to ask the sun. He didn't have to ask the stars. And God knows he didn't have to ask hell. And he didn't have to ask the devil because he got the keys already. He already rose with all power. All heaven and earth belong to him. He didn't have to ask hell. I know you've been going through hell, but he will break the power of hell because God... Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. For his eyes are on us. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. How many know that this is the day? Hallelujah. We have come to rejoice and be, we are glad in it. Today is, God is truly faithful to us. Hallelujah. He allowed us one more time. Hallelujah. To come together. Hallelujah. How many know that he allowed us one more time, hallelujah, to clap our hands, hallelujah, to give him praise, hallelujah. For that, we are thankful, hallelujah. We come to give God thanks early this morning, hallelujah, for what he has done, hallelujah. But not only for that, but about what he's going to do, amen. Hallelujah. He's going to keep us, hallelujah, because he is a keeper. For that, we give God thanks, hallelujah. For this morning, we want to say, Lord, I just want to thank you this morning. How many got to thank you, hallelujah, in your soul, hallelujah? How many got to thank you this morning that he woke you up this morning? Early, hallelujah, in your right mind this morning. Hallelujah. For that, we give God praise, hallelujah. For that, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being so good to me. Oh, so good to me. Oh, Lord, I just want to 
and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For the Lord, he is good. For the Lord, he is good. For the Lord, he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. We just want to thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank God for that testimony and praise. Because that's a testimony. Lord, I just want to thank you. I know they said you've been my bread, but you've been my peace <laughs> in the middle of turmoil. You've been my help in the middle of destruction. You've been my health in the middle of a pandemic. And those who have lost loved ones, you've been my peace. You've been my comfort. You've been my hope. So whatever side of the spectrum you're on, we can still say thank you for what the enemy meant for evil. He meant for you to lose your joy. He meant for you to lose your peace. He meant for you to be in a state of turmoil, but no weapon. Amen. That's why we say thank you. That's why we say thank you. It's not that everything has been so well or so good, but God has been good in the midst of it all. He said, my promise still remains good. Look at the, the heavens and say, your promise is still good. Amen. It's still good. <laughs> it's, not, it's not void. It's still good. It's still good. It's still good. Oh, yeah, my not Shia. That's how we worship our Lord. It's still good. You're faithful. You're just. You're righteous. Just means that he will handle the injustice. He's still good. Hallelujah. We honor God and we honor him with that praise. And thank you, D. You continue to bless him. And people that know me know my motto is, and the pastor said it last week, don't nobody know <laughs> like you know. You can even tell somebody, but you can't put the intensity of the event into words. But God knows. He sees and he cares. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All honor and praise go to our God. All honor and praise goes to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the psalmist said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come, come, come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth 
to all generation. And the truth is, it's still good to every generation. Hallelujah. 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 It's still good. <laughs> I know when the children of Israel was in the land of Egypt and they'd been there for many years, they was wondering, was the promise of deliverance still good? Ha <laughs> ha! But then God brought Moses from the backside <laughs> to let him know it's still good. Hallelujah. So whoever needed that, I know I needed it. I know I needed it. I know I needed it. It's still good. <laughs> what I said is still good. Hallelujah. Oh my God. We do have a preacher. And our pastor will bring the word of what thus saith the Lord. At this time, we'll have our scripture reading, if you don't mind standing. And our scripture will be found in Numbers chapter 23. Numbers 23. And I'm reading from the NLT, which is the New Living Translation. And starting at verse 18, this was the message Balaam delivered. Rise up, Balak, and listen. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man. So he does not lie. He is not human. So he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Listen, I received a command to bless. God has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. No misfortune is in his plan for Jacob. So Jacob is us. <laughs> no misfortune. I said no misfortune is in his plan for Jacob. No trouble is in store for Israel. For the Lord their God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. God brought them out of Egypt. For them, he is as strong as a wild ox. No curse can touch Jacob. No magic has any power against Israel. For now, it will be said of Jacob, what wonders God has done for Israel. And that is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, after coming to your presence with singing and thanksgiving and then hearing your word reaffirmed in our lives that you don't lie. So we can enter and come to the throne of grace boldly and find help and mercy in the time of need. As we come this morning, we come knowing that you are strong as a wild ox and nothing can stop you. And we thank you that your word reminds us if God be for you and that you're more than the world against them. So we come in a place with a heart humble before you, recognizing your authority, your dominion, and your power, and that you have delegated it freely unto us, your church. 
We ask that you would move upon the altars of our heart and open up our minds of understanding that we can walk in the hope of our calling, that we can stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free, that we will not be entangled again with any yoke of bondage, be it doubt, be it unbelief, be it low self-esteem, be it anything that would cause us to be paralyzed. Oh, Rabbi Lord, help us to stand and be light in the earth that we can show forth your glory. We can show forth your praise so we can walk in the authority where you have given us. Give us the confidence to launch out in the deep and to be confident in your spirit that lives inside of us. Now, Father, you know what's going on in the world. You know what's happening in the hearts and the minds of your people. You know from one end of time to the end of time. And we thank you now that your plan and your purpose will prevail. And we pray for the loss, the confused, the hurting, Show yourself mighty that we can move because you want to set the captives free. You want to heal the brokenhearted. You want to set at liberty them that are bruised. And you decided to use us, your body, the body of your son. Now I pray in Jesus' name that we will be fit for your use. Forgive us of our sins of unbelief and doubt and murmur and complaining and omission and commission of sins so that we can be justified by the blood of Jesus, not by our works. We can't boast, but we stand in the liberty of Jesus Christ. Now we turn the rest of this service into your hand. We pray that everything that will go forth will not only give you glory and give you praise, but it will give you an avenue to have your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. We look to you to show yourself anybody who is listening anybody who tuned in anybody who has a symbol that they will be liberated in the liberty of jesus christ and strengthened in their inner man oh god we know that you are jehovah rapha in the midst of everything that's going on, in the midst of people having lost loved ones, in the midst of people struggling with different ailments. Oh God, in Jesus' name, we pray for healing virtue to flow freely now. Oh, in the airwaves, in the atmosphere, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will receive glory, honor, and praise. There's nothing too hard for you. And we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Be God in this place. And we will forever give your name the praise. For you deserve all the honor, glory, and esteemed, awesome worship belongs to you and to you alone. And we give you praise. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Now, as we move into the furtherance of this service, we will have a selection by our own sermonic woman of God. Mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of God. Come forth in the name of Jesus and the power of the anointing. And immediately following that, we will have an announcement by our own Sister Sharon Forbes and then our pastoral greeting. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. The waters have been troubled. Glory to God. You got to get in it. Hallelujah, glory to God. The deacons came and told us they're thankful because God is good. Oh, God. And Elder Patterson came with that exhortation to let us know further that he's good and that he does not lie and that no curse can land on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll do exactly what he said. No matter what it looked like, no matter what it seemed like, he is still God. Hallelujah. And he said, I change not, but I am good. I'm the same today as I was yesterday. And I'm going to be the same tomorrow. Hallelujah. 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 No matter what comforts you have been stripped of, no matter what traditions, no matter what things that you have been stripped of, that you can walk into the house of God and predict what's going to happen. God is still worthy of worship. My God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a now God. And he wants us to know how to worship him in the now. He wants us to know how to worship him in what he is doing right now. He requires worship in spirit and in truth. No matter what is going on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's my prayer that the Lord fill your heart with music, even when the music is not present. That God fill your heart with music, even when the music is not present. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I remember I, I, I hear tell our ancestors used to say, I hear music in the air. Ha robo shiandarabahaya. Oh my God, even if you're in a strange land, God has still surrounded us with songs of deliverance. My God, my God, oh God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He wants to know what we're working with today. It's not in an organ. It's not in the drums. It's not in the latest tunes. But it is in what's in your heart. My God. Ah, oh, Lord, I present myself to you as a living sacrifice. Ah, oh, God, thank you. And I believe that I'm in the house because he gave me a, long, a song this morning to continue to declare that he is good. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to take my time and collect myself in his presence. Hallelujah. I'm not doing that. Ah, ah, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory. You are the healer of the broken hearted. You are the mender when we're torn apart. You are the light that brightens of the darkness. We see clearly who you are, good God. Yeah, y'all are in it, come on. Yeah. Good God, yeah, yeah, good God. Mm -hmm. A good God. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid of all the fears that shake me. You fought the battle and gave me the win. You hold my future when my past can't break me. I'm so glad I'm in your hands. Good God. Ha, ah, hallelujah. Can y'all say it? Good God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good God. Mm, yeah. It's your love alone that leaves me speechless. I still remember when you called my name. Far beyond the guilt and shame it reaches. I know I'll never be the same. Cause you're a good God. Yeah. A good God. Hey, yeah. A mighty God.
name, good God, Father, healer, deem, you're a good God, creator, my savior, and defender, yeah, creator, savior, defender, good God, Father, healer, redeemer, good God, creator, savior, my defender, Father, my healer, my redeemer, creator,
for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, if you just give me one minute, just give me one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in one of the chronicles. Let me tell you something. This is a declaration. And the prophetic is going forth. And the Lord is reminding me of a story back in Chronicles. I don't remember whether it's the first or second, but it's in there. You look for it. And it's the story about a king named Jehoshaphat. And they were in a famine. And they were in trouble. And they had the whole world seem like against him. And Jehoshaphat fasted and prayed. And he said, God, what am I going to do? So the Lord said, I want you to, to fast. And I want you to put the babies on the fast. Everybody in your household on the fast. I want you to put the animals on the fast. And I want you to stay there until I tell you to get up. And when he gave them to the command to get up, he said, send the praisers first. Send the worshipers first. Send them out on the battlefield. And you won't have to lift a finger. The only thing you'll have to do is declare my goodness. The only thing you'll have to do is this. Say, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endure forever. They had three tribes coming against them, three mighty tribes, pagan and uncircumcised. And they did what the Lord said. And when they did what the Lord said, the enemy began to consume himself. One tribe fought against the next tribe, and the next tribe fought against the other tribe. And all they had to do was stand back and declare in a time of famine, in a time of disease, in a time of lack, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endure forever. And after they finished declaring the goodness of the Lord, it took them three days to get the treasures that the enemies left behind. It took them three days. Three days. So how does that apply to us as we stand here and worship in the conditions that we're in? If we declare, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is good for his mercy and do it forever. He's doing something in the atmosphere. He's causing the enemy, which is the prince of the air, to consume himself, to trip up over himself in the mighty name of Jesus. And I believe if we stay faithful to praise and to worship, the Lord will release. When Elder Patterson was exhorting and when she was praying, I felt in my spirit, I heard the word release. I've been tied up in something for a long time. The enemy tries to come after my soul. But even in this time, I will get my release. I will get my release. I will bless the Lord. I will get my release. Oh, God. Oh, God. And as I dance, I conquer those low-lying demons. I come against every low lying demon, the one you can't see, the one that comes to come around your ankles and trip you up. But I dance a dance of victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, God. This is what God wants. He wants liberty. He wants worship. He don't want a pandemic to bind up his people because he requires worship of us. Hallelujah. And he gave us liberty. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Please let us hear the announcements. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Father. Good morning again. We would like to say happy 80th birthday to Sister Barbara Holloway, which is on 5-1. Sister Gladys Lee, 5-1. Sister Marilyn Hines on the 4th. Sister Phyllis Hearing on the 6th. And Sister Cynthia Johnson Harris on the 7th. Happy birthday to you all of your family and your church family. Lord whom thou lovest is sick and shut in. Sister Mary Andrews, Mother Janie Bradley, Sister Mary Driffin, Sister Nadine Fitzpatrick, Sister Mae Ford, Sister Ann Gallman, Sister Mamie Grennan, Sister Minnie Harris, Sister Sadie Holly, Trustee Andrea Jackson Brooks, Sister Brenda Jeter, Sister Mary Johnson, Sister Hattie Kelly, Brother Jimmy McCoy, Sister Eunice Mayo, Sister Lucinda Neverson, Sister Willie Francis Payne, Sister Patricia Miller Richardson, Sister Rebecca Seaborn, Brother Gregory Thickpin, Sister Christine Washington, and Sister Francis Younger. If you would like to reach out to any of these members, you can call or email the church office to request their address or telephone number. 10th Memorial Baptist Church Women's Day 2021 Consecration Service. Preacher Reverend Narissa Grigsby. That is today at 6 p.m. Zoom service. Meeting ID is 
1-922-5863. The password is 192-453. The calling number is 888-788-0099. That's today at 6 p.m. COVID-19 vaccine virtual town hall. In partnership with the Husky Health Program, this will be Thursday, May the 6th at 11 a.m. Presenter Reginald J. Edie, MD, MBA, President and CEO of Trinity Health of New England. You can register at http dot forward slash forward, forward slash us02 web dot zoom dot us dot web webinar excuse me us forward slash webinar forward slash register forward slash wm p f x e t six i c q h a d b c p e seven five d y u g <laughs> that's a lot so this is going to be on our facebook page and on our um church website and also i believe that they will send out an email a robo email so you can have this information if you're interested saint matthew's church Family and friends say the day Elder Kevin C. Hardy, pastor and first lady minister Valerie Hardy's sixth pastoral anniversary celebration will be June the 5th and the 6th of 2021. More information to follow soon. Tides and offerings. We have three ways of giving. You can mail it to the church. Cash app. SMUF. WBC Church, www.paypal.me forward slash SM Church Offering. Or while within PayPal, type S SM Church Offering 100 at gmail.com. You can mail your checks to St. Matthew's Church, 400 Dixel Avenue, and we do debit or credit. So you can call Trusty Erica Bradley or Trusty Juanita Mazik. And please, let's not forget to give to the benevolent offering. We have other announcements. Um, we have a card. Thank you, Pastor Hardy, First Lady, Minister Valerie, and the St. Matthew's Church family. Thank you all for your tremendous support, staff, and prayers during this difficult time for us. We appreciate all that you did in the beautiful Peace Lily plant. Please know that we are sending our deepest gratitude and appreciation. Love the Highsmith family. Also, Brother Jimmy McCoy is in the hospital, so let's keep in, him in prayer. And if anyone lost your earring yesterday, you can see Mother King because she has it. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be very brief. I thank God for the presence of the Lord and want to thank our deacons ministry for starting us out. Lord, I just want to thank you for being so good. And then our worship leader this morning and Elder Patterson exhorting the word of the Lord, the name of the Lord and the promises of the Lord. And then for Lady Hardy coming and blessing us, not just with reminding us that God is good, but also reminding us and speaking a word, a prophetic word in the atmosphere of release. Bless God. And all those ingredients worked for a high time in the Lord. 
I just want to briefly acknowledge, if you'll allow me, as a proud father and pastor. Uh, yesterday was College Decision Day, and I proudly have a senior who has uh, committed to school, and she is in the person of my daughter, Corinne Hardy, and she's here this morning, and I just want to publicly recognize her and let her know how proud her mom and I are of her. Corinne Hardy, if she will uh, stand, she has committed to Eastern Connecticut State University. She'll be attending there in the fall. And we just want to thank you, St. Matthews, for how you continue to pray for, encourage, and love on Corinne and Jay and encourage them. And uh, this is not just a proud moment for her mom and I, but it is a proud moment for this church. So I just want to thank you so very much and ask that you would continue to keep her in your prayers and continue to keep us in your prayers. Amen. So thank you for indulging me. Now I'm going to ask my lovely wife if she minds if I would just go ahead and preach. I know you had another song, all right? Some would say you're the pastor, but I'm her husband. I got to go home. So I got to make sure when I go home that things are all right. <laughs> amen, amen. You'll be like, why is pastor sleeping in the church? What's, what's going on? <laughs> this car is still in that parking space. What happened? <laughs> Praise the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you what you're, for what you already have done, and we pray that you will continue to minister to us through your word. We thank you that our hearts are ready to receive your word, your word which is spirit and its life. We have already heard that it is impossible for you to lie, so therefore we know that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, but how can they hear except they be a preacher? So I ask that you would anoint me now to preach your word with clarity, conviction, and power without limitation or distraction. Say what you want to say. I have prepared, but it is you who has meet the needs. So God, we thank you and give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are going to go to a familiar passage of scripture for many and, and for others it may be new, but we're going to go to Mark chapter 4 and we're going to read verses 35 through 41. Mark 4 verses 35 through 41. When you find it, it reads as such. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. This morning, I want to lift from the subject, trusting God in the storms of life. Trusting God in the storms of life. As I begin this message, I was reminded of a hymn that we so often have sung here at St. Matthew's by the late, great Thomas Dorsey. And the lyrics go something like this, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea, when the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done that makes this race so hard to run. Then I say to my soul, 
take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. And the refrain goes, the Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow, he will take away each sorrow. Let him have your burdens now. When the load bears down so heavy and the weight is shown upon my brow, there's a sweet relief in knowing the Lord will make a way somehow. Can you put your hand on yourself and say, the Lord will make a way somehow. The words of this hymn bring comfort to those that read them or sing them, even in the midst of a storm. With that being said, I ask the question, which is what the Lord put on the table this morning. How do we trust God in the midst of our storm? How do we trust God when things are shaking and rocking? I'm so glad that God knows how to provide his own answers. He didn't need me to try to make something up. He knows how to give his own answers to whatever we ask him. And those answers are coming this morning from our text, Mark 4, 35 through 41. Mark, the writer, he's writing to a Roman audience of believers to reassure them of God's character, his faithfulness, and his ability. And all we were doing this morning was rejoicing on the fact that our God is faithful. Like many of us, these disciples were dealing with storms that threatened their faith and also a culture that was contrary to a life in following Jesus Christ. In dealing with a fast-paced life, we need a fast-paced gospel. And that's what Mark's gospel is, a fast-paced gospel. His gospel is unique because he highlights the divinity of God. He also highlights the humanity of God, but he highlights most of all the actions of God. And so instead of spending so much time on Jesus' sermons, he spends time talking about Jesus' actions. This is where we find ourselves this morning. The disciples are with Jesus, and he instructs them, let us go across to the other side. Why the other side? Because there is more on the other side. More. This is our year of more, St. Matthews. There's more on the other side. So Jesus is saying, you got to go to the other side because there's more on the other side. There is new territory, new opportunities, new blessings, new strength, new foresight, new help on the other side. So through this text, we will see that sometimes resistance is on the way to more. So I know what I said that the Lord told me for January, I said, this is the year of more. And some of you is May and you're like, but there's been nothing but resistance. But I'm trying to tell you that just because there is resistance does not mean that there's not more. You made the decision for more and then resistance decided to show up even though you didn't invite him. But God said, I got something for your resistance. I got my reassurance. So when we want to trust God in the midst of our storm, the first thing that we need to do is trust God as our resource. Remember what God said. This is God talking. He said, let us go to the other side. God wants to be a part of our next steps. He didn't just send them to the other side. He said, let us go to the other side. What the enemy does is he tries to distort the picture of what God's word has told us to do and tries to distort and deceive the character of God. Because when you look at the text, he says, let's go to the other side, let us go. But then it says that Jesus was sleeping. So sometimes there's some distortion where they put the emphasis on the wrong thing. So it seems like Jesus is with me but he's sleeping during the storms of my life. What's up with that? There's some tension. I talked about that last week. It produces some tension. And that tension and that distortion from the enemy is seeking to discourage us, overwhelm us, make us feel helpless, make us feel forgotten, and make us feel forsaken. But God says we can trust him in the midst of our storm. 
we got to remember that these were experienced fishermen here. So apparently they must have encountered a storm or two, but there was something different about here. This time Jesus was with them. And his resource is because his presence is what proceeds power. Jesus' presence is what precedes power. He gave me this funny but true example. I called my bank and I said to my bank, I gave them my account number. And then after I gave them the account number, I said, you know, I would like to do, you know, some things with my account. And they said, well, just as long as the money is present, you can do what you want. So here's the point I'm trying to make. As long as the resource is present, he can do what he wants. Because they told me, they said, I said, well, the money is present. They said, well, you can withdraw, you can transfer, you can save, you can bill pay, you can do what you want as long as the resource is there. So the first thing Jesus wanted me to tell you is he's on the boat with you because as long as the resource is there, he can do what he wants. He can move, he can save, he can change, he can transform as long as the resource is there. He can do what he wants because the resource is present. So the first thing he wants me to let you know is the fact that he is present with you even in the midst of this storm means that he can do what he wants. And remember that it was Jesus' idea to go to the other side. And what I love about that is when it's Jesus' idea, he will back up what he said. Now, see, all Lady Hardy did was tell you what was Jesus' idea. That praise will proceed the power. That was Jesus' idea, that his presence will proceed his peace, his provision. We see it here in this story. So what happens is, as long as it's God's idea, God's word, he'll back up what he said. It was Jesus' idea that I get to the other side, that you get to the other side, that you go through the storm. So he's going to make it happen because those were his words. And as long as they're his words and his idea, he'll back it up. Put your hand on this, yourself and say, he'll back it up. Him as a resource. It says when his presence is there. And he's my resource. Even when things have been affected by the storm, it's not too late. Amen. Now, I'm telling somebody something because they need to remember that. Even though something has been affected by the storm, it does not mean that it's too late. Where do I get that from? Verse 38 says the boat was affected by the storm. It was being beat by the winds and the waves, and it was already being filled with water. And just because the boat was filled with water and it was affected, God wanted me to tell you it wasn't too late because the boat did not sink. You got some things that have been affected, but it will not sink. Just because it's been affected by the storm does not mean that it's too late for God to save it. What God is a part of, he will restore it. He will protect it. He will preserve it. He will be the one to do it because just because there has been an effect does not mean that God will not keep what he said. That's where the distortion happens because the enemy tries to make you feel like because you experience the effects that God is not going to do what he said. But I came to tell you this morning that just like this boat, God is going to keep you. I know you feel some shaking. I know you feel some rocking. I know you have felt the effects, but God sent me here to tell you this morning, he's going to keep you. The effects only tell half the story. You can't stop reading at verse 37. Yes, the boat was affected, but the boat did not sink. The boat was not destroyed. The boat did not stop until it got to the other side. 
So some of you have had some things that have been affected by the storm. Some of you have some family that has been affected. Some of you have some finances that have been affected. Some of you have some dreams that have been affected. Some of you have some confidence that has been affected. Some of you have some thoughts that have been affected. But God told me to tell you that just because it's been affected, it is not over. Because he's our resource. God said, I'm your resource and I can and will deal with what's been affected. That ought to be some good news for somebody because we are feeling the effects of some things. But God said, just because your boat is affected, it will not sink. Something that I had never noticed before and paid a lot of attention, but it says in the beginning of the text in 37 or 38, it says that Jesus was in one boat with the disciples, but there were other boats. It wasn't just one boat, there were other boats. So what he shared with me this means is there are some other areas in your life that are affected as well. There might be one thing that seems to be getting all the attention. You're praying about this. But he said just because you're praying about that one boat, there's some other boats that's going to be blessed too. So just because you might be praying for your family, it don't mean your finances ain't going to be blessed. I got some other boats that God is going to keep because I had the nerve to trust him as my resource just because you're praying for your mind don't mean your body ain't gonna be blessed just because you're praying for your church don't mean your home ain't gonna be blessed just because you're praying for your son don't mean your mother ain't gonna be blessed you need to know that I got some other boats that God is gonna keep as well it's not just the one that seems to be getting all the attention just because you hear me praying about my job don't mean that God ain't gonna bless my home I got some other boats that God is gonna bless too I need you to put your hand on yourself and say I got some other boats that God's gonna bless too that one boat got all the attention but it don't mean that all the boats didn't make it to the other side Sometimes I'm so overwhelmed and preoccupied with one thing, but God wanted me to tell you that he's blessing some other boats that are as associated with you, connected with you. Just because I may be praying for Jay don't mean Corinne ain't going to be blessed. Just because I'm praying for home don't mean my church ain't going to be blessed. Just because I'm praying for St. Matthews don't mean the body of Christ ain't going to be blessed. Just because I'm praying for the deacons don't mean the mothers and the trustees and the choirs ain't going to be blessed. I got some other boats. that are going to get to the other side anyway. Put your hand on yourself and say, I got some other boats that God's going to bless. He told me three F's that I just want to put out there in the atmosphere. Somebody can type it. Some of those other boats are family, finances, and your future. Family, finances, and your future. So we trust God as resource. And we also trust God's reasons. The tension builds here, as I said, because God is present, but the text says he's sleeping. He's present, but it says he's sleeping. What does that mean? 
when you're in the midst of the storm, I think many of us have been there when we felt like we're in a storm and we felt like Jesus was sleeping. But it points more to God's confidence than his lack of compassion. It points more to his authority instead of his arrogance. Let me tell you what I mean. First of all, I must reemphasize that it was Jesus' idea to get to the other side and to go to the other side. This is his word. He is the one who is able to defend his own word, as I said. And we see him resting. Because you got to picture who this is in this boat. He is resting, the son of God and the son of man, the one who was there with creation. Because he is confident about what he said to you, even when you're not. Oh, my God. He can rest in the midst of the storm because he is so confident about what he said about you, even when you're not. He said, I told them to go to the other side. Therefore, they're going to get to the other side. So I can rest in that even when they cannot. He's not stressed out about what he said about you. I lift my hands up for that one. He's not worried about what he said about me. He's not worried about what he said he's going to do for me. He's not worried about what he said is going to happen for me. And he told me to share that he was resting because he had victory on his mind. God was resting. Jesus was resting because he had victory on his mind. He was not concerned about how he was going to get you to the other side. So sometimes we have to show the face of resistance that we are going to decide to demonstrate our faith. Jesus showed us that it is possible for a believer to sleep and to rest in the midst of a storm. I know you think it's hard to do, and it is challenging to do, but he said, if I'm present, if I'm present, you can rest in the midst of your storm. It's the swagger, that's the confidence of our Savior, it's the swagger that he can be in a boat in the midst of a storm and still decide that he's going to rest because it was a foreshadowing. He said, this made me so excited, he has the, the swagger and the confidence to sleep in the face of a storm because he is both man and miracle worker. But Jesus has the nerve and the authority and the audacity to lay down in the midst of places that other people could not because this is just a foreshadowing. He said, first, I'm going to do it with the sea, and second, I'm going to do it in the tomb. I will lay down in places that you think that I am asleep in, but I'm going to show you that I was never sleeping. I knew everything that was going on. That was always purpose. So this is a foreshadowing, letting you know that I am in control of the elements. I am in control of all. And so just because you think I'm quiet, it don't mean I'm inactive because in the tomb he was not inactive he was resting the body was but his spirit was in hell getting victory so I proclaim to you that the swagger of our God had victory on his mind he said I can sleep in places that don't have victory over me First, it was the boat. Second, it was the tomb. I'm not sweating them. I'm not sweating that situation. I can rest in the boat and I can rest in the tomb because it's just temporary. He had victory on his mind. said my disciples will get to the other side 
Trust in his resource, trust in his reason, but we also trust in his relief. As I said, the storm acts as a deceiver to make us feel like God doesn't care. And these folks, these disciples said, teacher, don't you care? Now, whether we vocalized it or not, there are sometimes if we're honest, we feel like, Lord, don't you care? Don't you see? Do you see what's going on? As that commercial says, do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> like a Verizon commercial, can you hear me now? They said, what many of us, if we're honest, have struggled with, teacher, don't you care what's happening here? I know what you told us, but I know what I'm experiencing. See, that's the tension that a lot of us feel. We're like, I know what you said, but I know what I'm experiencing. I know what you said, but I know what I'm experiencing. You got to help me bridge the gap here between what you said and what I'm experiencing. The present resource God says, I have no problem doing that. I have the swagger to do that. I have the intelligence to do that. And what happens is on the baseline is interestingly storms and struggles don't just reveal where Christ is and who he is. It also reveals areas in us that st still need to be dealt with. I didn't get too many good claps for that, but it's the truth. It reveals areas. These were experienced fishermen. You know they were embarrassed saying, Lord, we ought to not be crying so much during a storm. There are some of us in here who've been walking with Christ, and sometimes we're even ashamed. We're like, Lord, I shouldn't be dealing with this again. I shouldn't be going around this mountain. I'm supposed to be past that. I'm supposed to be over that. I'm even ashamed to come to you for. It's like this is an ex these are experienced fishermen. It wasn't their first day on the job, and then they're gonna be shaking. And sh you're like, Lord, I know I'm not supposed to be shaking over this. I know this is not supposed to be shaking me and rocking me and make. I know I'm not. And some pastors would try to make you feel guilty just because you have some shake in you. But God told me to tell you what the scripture said. He did not rebuke them. He spoke to them. He spoke to them and comforted them. But what I need to tell you is there is no need to put on a facade for him. That you have it all together. All you got to do is come to him. He is willing to confront your emotions even when they ain't pretty. He is willing to confront your questions even when they ain't pretty. Because remember, I said, this is God here. And even if you don't tell him, he still knows. You might as well tell him. Because he already knows. He said, I know the heart of man. So he will confront your questions. He will confront your issues and even your emotions that aren't always pretty. The emotions when you're stressed out, when you're angry, when you're disappointed, when you're frustrated, when you're worrying. He will confront all of that because that's what the fishermen were dealing with. He said, I will confront them and comfort you. He spoke to them. And this thing right here, bless me, he didn't rebuke them. He spoke to them. He rebuked the elements. But I'm happy that my relief comes in knowing what it says in verse 38. It says, and they woke him. We got a woke God. 
I know there's some people who are excited and this in this generation, all they say is you got to be woke or you got to stay woke. Well, I'm happy that you're woke. You got some increased awareness. You're happy about what's happening and you know what's going on in social justice. That's all good. But I got a woke God who is able to do and his God is woke. I'm happy that you're woke. But God is not just woke, he's able. Even in spite of all of your wokeness, there's some stuff you can't do. There's some stuff you can't change. But God is woke. God is woke. He is aware. He is alert. And he is able. He is that woke. We got to trust the relief that's coming because our God is woke. Put your hand on yourself and say, our God is woke. I'm happy that we are woke. That's great. I'm not saying anything against it, but the scripture says God is woke. Alert, aware, and able. Besides trusting him as a resource, trusting his relief, trusting his reasons. I want to leave you with the fact that we got to trust God with the results. He is a results oriented God. Verse 38 said, Jesus was asleep in the stern. That's the back of the boat. The furthest part in the back of the boat. Resting with victory on his mind. So what the spirit told me to tell you is his results is Jesus had to be in the back to show you that you could be in the back of some things and still be victorious. Somebody needs to come from the back of the stern of where they were and realize that God is calling you from the back to victory because you've been in the stir too long. Some of you have felt that you are behind the eight ball, that you have lost time and you don't feel no direction but back because you've just felt backward the whole time. But God wanted me to tell you that you will get through the storm because he came from the stir to the front so he could talk to the elements so you can come from where you were from the back and still be victorious from the back and still speak God's word from the back and still be restored from the back and still be healed from the back and still be blessed come from the stern and understand that God is calling you from the back to the blessing from the back to the deliverance from the back to the change from the back that's the results he's talking about some of you are feeling just backwards and that the storm has left you turned around but I'm so glad that God said come from the stir and come forward from the back to the blessing backward in your mind come from the stern of your mind Come from the stern of your disappointment. Come from the stern of your frustration. Come from the stern of your disbelief. Come from the stern. Put your hand on yourself and say, come from the stern. Come from the back to the blessing. Come from the back to the blessing. And as I would close, I just want to tell you that as he came back and came back from the stern, came forward, he said to the storm, he said, peace, be still. Now, remember what I told you from the beginning, I said God's presence precedes his power, his provision, and his peace. Yeah. 
But what I love about it is what he showed us, the depth of the church. Because he says, peace, be still. And nicely, he's saying, peace, I know some people don't like this word, shut up. If you look in the ancient Hebrew, he's not speaking nicely to that storm. And when I researched, it is the same language he used in Mark 1 and 25 when he saw the demonic man. And he told the demonic man, come out of him, shut up and leave him alone. So what God was telling me he's doing is when he said peace, he said, I am moving. The church is moving for deliverance beyond the surface. The church was never meant to provide surface deliverance. Where we have a storm and it's quiet for a little while. And we have jumped and shouted, but we don't see permanent results. Nowhere did it say in the text that after Jesus said, shut up and come out of them and be still, that they even dare poke their head up again. But God said, I'm going deep for the deliverance. I'm going deep for the restoration. I'm going beyond the surface and my words will penetrate to the deep places. I'm tired of just the surface attendance, just the surface effect, but God said my words will go deep. My words deep dig deep, they reach deep, they affect deep. That's how you trust him, to realize that his words did not stay on the surface of the storm or the individual. They went deep. Put your hand on yourself and say they went deep. So the results come because we are coming from the stern. And we know, we are reminded and reassured that God's words reach deep. Deep and lasting effect. We're going to open the doors for salvation at this time. But we're going to make this declaration as I would ask everybody to stand. Put your hand on yourself and say, I will trust God. In the storms of my life, I will trust God in the storms of my life. If that is you and you don't know Christ and the pardon of your sins, it's time to trust God. There will be storms, but God promised to be present. And his presence precedes his power his provision and his peace it's right here in the text he has victory on his mind concerning you if that's you and you want to give your life to Jesus we invite you to say this prayer with us dear God I ask that you forgive me of my sins you said in your word, if I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead, I would be saved. I believe it and I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. 
I am now saved. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. We will walk this Christian journey together. Amen. If that was you, put your name in the chat. If there was anybody here who wanted to come, the doors are open. You can come for salvation if that's you. And next call is if you want to become a member of this church. You're already a believer, but you're looking for a community to grow with and to serve God with. I couldn't think of a better one than the one right here at St. Matthew's Unison Free Will Baptist Church. If that's you, type your name into the chat or come forward at this time. If that was you and you did it virtually, please email me at pastorhardy1206 at icloud.com, pastorhardy1206 at icloud.com, or call me at 203-584-0579. God bless you. You may take your seats. We're going to call for the deacons in our communion at this time. And as I go again, say, I'm going to trust God in the storms of my life. Hallelujah. Let us break bread together Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When Cup together on our knees. Let us drink the cup together on our knees. When we fall on our knees, we'll now face to the rising sun. At this time, we have a scripture reading, amen, from our own Deacon Taylor. Hallelujah. In remembrance. For as often as you eat this bread yes, often. and drink this cup, yes, Lord. you do show the Lord's death. Well, Lord, well, well, well. Yes, Lord. Amen. This is the word of God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now we have our prayer of confession led by Deacon Bryant.
Hallelujah. Now we have our prayer by Deacon Rogers. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you as humble as we know how, thanking you uh, for waking us up this morning, for starting us on our way, God, for allowing us to come into the house of the Lord one more time. But thank you for waking us up in our right mind, in a mind to know that you are Lord, and beside you there is no other. As we come into this house and in remembrance of you, we do communion. And we ask you, the bread, bless the bread that represents your body and the juice that represents your blood. And as we do this, Lord, we ask you, we ask that we repent of anything that we have done that we have said, done, or even thought that was unpleasing in your sight, Lord. We ask that you forgive us of these things. And we ask these things in your name. And we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. In a time like this, hallelujah, where he has allowed us to commune one more time, hallelujah. Whatever element you have in front of you, hallelujah, we, we, have, we know that God has already blessed it. Hallelujah. Whatever you have, the bread that represents his body. Hallelujah. And as Matthew 26, in the, in the beginning of the 26th verse, Jesus took this bread and he gave it to you, his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord, he's worthy. Hallelujah. And when he took the cup, hallelujah, he gave thanks, gave it to you and said, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Yes, Lord, drink ye all of it. That was said for the remissions of sins. And after that, you know, they went into the Mount of Olives and they sang a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. In the back of the, in the back, turn back in the hands of the pulpit. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right, if all hearts and minds are clear, it has been a very encouraging service and we thank God for the presence of the Lord. And we, as we are about to leave this place, we have been able to partake in the communion in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, next week is Mother's Day, and in honor of Mother's Day, we annually have Lady Hardy, who will bring forth the, the word next week. So she will uh, be serving and will be uh, preaching the word. And now, if our hearts and minds are clear, we will dismiss by sharing the benediction from Ephesians 3, 20, 21. ESV version. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. You are blessed coming in and blessed going out.